This course introduces the concepts of computer networks. Course overview. Uh, module 1 introduces transmission modes, networks, uh, network architecture and uh, reference models. Module 2 deals with uh, services of physical layer and data link layer and related protocols. Module 3 is about network layer, virtual LAN and networking devices. Module 4 explains routing algorithms and uh, routing protocols. Uh, module 5 covers the topics on transport layer protocols, congestion control, flow control and uh, application layer. Module 5 describes internet security issues, types of attacks and networks and uh, methods to counterfeit them. Next, uh, textbooks to consult uh, are Barrow's F. R. Rosen's Cryptography and Network Security, 4th edition and the Computer Network, a top-down approach uh, by J.F. Kuros and uh, K.W. Rose. First of all, what is uh, data communication? Communication is about the transfer of information from a sender across a distance to a receiver. Using electricity, radio waves or light, information and data are transmitted through a physical medium such as wire, cable or even the atmosphere. The effectiveness of a data communication system depends on four fundamental characteristics. Delivery, accuracy, timeliness and jitter. Delivery means the system must deliver data to the correct destination. Data must be received by the original or the real device or user and only by that device or user. Accuracy means the system must deliver data accurately. Data that have been changed or altered in transmission and left uncorrected are unusable. Next, timeliness. The system must deliver data in a timely manner. Data delivered late are useless. In the case of video and audio, timely delivery means delivering data as they are produced in the same order that they are produced and without significant delay. This kind of delivery is called real-time transmission. Next, jitter. Jitter refers to the variation in the packet arrival time. It is it is an uneven delay in the delivery of audio and video packets. Next, the components of data communication. First, message. The message is the information or data to be communicated. Uh, sender. Sender is a device that sends a data message. It can be a computer, workstation, telephone handset, video camera and so on. Receiver. The receiver is a device that receives a message. It can be a computer, workstation, telephone handset, television and so on. Next, transmission medium. The transmission medium is a physical path by which a message travels from sender to receiver. Some examples of transmission media include twisted pair wire, coaxial cable, fiber optic cable and radio waves. Next, protocol. Protocol is a set of rules that govern data communication. It represents an agreement between the communicating devices. Next, a data transmission. Data transmission refers to the movement of data in the form of bits between two or more digital devices. This transfer of data takes place via some form of transmission media, for example, coaxial cable, fiber optics, etc. Data transmission can be classified into parallel transmission and serial transmission. Here serial transmission is again classified into synchronous transmission and asynchronous transmission. Next, serial data transmission. When uh, data is sent or received using serial data transmission, the data bits can only be sent uh, one after another. Here the data bits can, are sent one after another. Hence, they are organized in a specific order. It is viewed as a reliable data transmission method because uh, a data bit is only sent if the previous data bit has already been received. Advantages of uh, serial transmission. Uh, in, for serial transmission, only a single uh, communication line is used. So, the use of a single communication line reduces a transmission line cost uh, as compared to parallel transmission. 
and the disadvantages of serial transmission uh, here uh, some conversion devices are required at uh, source and destination uh, this may lead to increase in overall transmission cost next uh, this method is slower as compared to parallel transmission because the bits are transmitted serially one after the other next uh, types of serial transmission so serial transmission can again be classified into synchronous and asynchronous both these uh, transmissions use uh, bit synchronization bit synchronization uh, means it helps the receiving computer to know when the data begin and end during a transmission asynchronous transmission asynchronous transmission sends only one character at a time where a character is either a letter of the alphabet or number or control character that it sends one byte of data at a time bit synchronization between two devices is made possible using a start bit and a stop bit start bit indicates the beginning of a uh, data uh, start bit is uh, usually a zero and is added to the beginning of each byte stop bit indicates a uh, end of data uh usually the st stop bit is a one addition of start and stop bits increase the number of data bits hence more bandwidth is consumed in asynchronous transmission there is idle time between the transmissions of different data bytes this idle time is known as gap the gap or idle time can be of varying intervals advantages of asynchronous transmission this method is cheaper uh, in cost as compared to synchronous method uh, if lines are short a synchronous transmission is better and in this approach if a character is corrupted during transmission uh, its uh, previous and uh, next characters will not be affected because here each character is complete in itself then it is possible to transmit signals from sources having different data bit rates the transmission can start as soon as the data byte becomes available then this method of uh, transmission is easy to implement and disadvantages of asynchronous transmission this method is less efficient and slower because uh, uh, we need some extra bits uh, like start and stop bits and also we insert gaps between bytes so this method is slower and also uh, this method uh, depends on recognition of start bits and these start bits can be missed or corrupted next uh, synchronous transmission synchronous transmission does not use a start and stop bits like a synchronous transmission in this method bit stream is combined into longer frames that may contain multiple bytes there is no gap between various bytes in the data stream but uh, but in asynchronous transmission there is a gap between each of different bytes but here there is no gap between various bytes in the data stream and also in the absence of start and stop bits here a synchronous transmission does not use start and stop bits so in the absence of a start and stop bits bit synchronization is uh, established uh, by timing the transmission of each bit so here sender and receiver uses a timing of a transmission of each bit and here there is no gap between various bytes so the receiver has to separate the bit stream into bytes in order to receive the data error free the receiver and sender operates at the same clock frequency advantages of synchronous transmission this method is faster as compared to asynchronous because uh, here uh, we are not using extra bits like start bit and stop bits and there is no gap between individual data bytes hence this method is faster next uh, disadvantages of synchronous transmission method uh, it is costly as compared to asynchronous method because here we uh, you, we need a uh, local buffer storage and also uh, we need accurately synchronized clocks at both ends uh, and also the sender and receiver must operate at the same clock frequency next uh, comparison between asynchronous and synchronous methods 
uh, for factor data send at one time. For asynchronous, uh, usually one byte is sent. For synchronous, multiple bytes can be sent. And start and stop it. Uh, for asynchronous, we use start and stop it. For synchronous, we are not using this uh, start and stop it. And for asynchronous, uh, there is gap between uh, different bytes. Uh, but for synchronous, there is no gap between different bytes. And uh, data transmission speed, uh, for asynchronous, we are using start and stop bits and uh, also there is gap between bytes. Hence, uh, asynchronous method is uh, slow. But synchronous method, uh, we are not using start and stop bits and there is no gap between bytes. And hence, uh, synchronous method is uh, fast. And for uh, cost, uh, asynchronous method is having low cost compared to synchronous method. Next, uh, parallel transmission. In parallel data transmission, multiple data bits are transmitted over multiple channels at the same time. So multiple data bits, multiple channels at the same time. So this means that uh, data can be sent much faster than uh, using a serial transmission method. Here you can see the simultaneous transmission of 8-bit uh, data at the same time using 8 channels. Next, uh, advantages and disadvantages of using uh, parallel data transmission. Uh, the main advantage is uh, it is easier to program and uh, data is sent faster. Uh, but disadvantage is it requires more transmission channels than serial transmission. Comparison between serial and parallel transmission. Uh, considering the number of bits transmitted at one clock pulse uh, for serial method, only one bit is sent uh, at one clock pulse, but in parallel method, there are there you can send uh, uh, multiple number of bits. Here we indicate it as n bits. So n bits can can be transmitted at one clock pulse. Uh, for serial transmission, number of lines required to transmit n bits. For serial transmission, only one line uh, is required to transmit n bits because only one bit is transmitted at one time. Next, uh, parallel uh, transmission. Uh, in order to transmit n bits, we require n parallel lines. Next, uh, for serial transmission, uh, the speed is uh, slow because only one bit is sent at, uh, at a time. So, for parallel method, it is uh, fast because uh, multiple bits can be sent at a time. Next, uh, serial transmission, cost, uh, cost is uh, low as only one line is required. Tra only one transmission line is required to transmit a number of bits. Uh, but for parallel method, uh, we need uh, n lines for transmission of n bits and hence it is uh, having higher cost. Then application for serial transmission is used uh, for long distance communication and parallel transmission is used for short distance communication. Next, uh, transmission modes. Transmission mode means uh, transferring of data between two devices. It is also known as communication mode. There are three types of transmission modes. Simplex mode, half duplex mode, full duplex mode. Simplex mode, uh, in simplex mode, the communication is unidirectional. Only one of the two devices on a link can transmit. The other can only receive. Uh, half duplex mode. In, in half duplex mode, each station can both transmit and receive, but not at the same time. When one device is sending, the other can only receive and vice versa. Uh, the half duplex mode is used in cases where there is no need for communication in, in both directions at the same time. The entire capacity of the channel can be utilized for each direction. Here in this picture, you can see that uh, at a time A is sending, uh, at that time B cannot send, B is only receiving. Next, uh, full duplex mode. In full duplex mode, both stations can transmit and receive simultaneously. So full duplex mode is used when communication in both directions is required all the time. The capacity of the channel must be divided between the two directions. Example, telephone network. Telephone network is an example for full duplex mode communication. So in this uh, lecture, we talked about uh, data communication, then components of data communication and various transmission methods, serial and parallel transmission, asynchronous and synchronous transmission, 
and then transmission modes uh, like simplex, half duplex and full duplex mode. 